Hello and welcome to Colred Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Colred, and in today's video, I go after Tormund the Cold. In fact, I only have an hour and nine minutes left to pull shards for the current Summon Rush event for the Yuletide Titan event. The final reward being Tormund the Cold. Now I'm going to go over this event just a little bit to tell you my reasoning why I am personally going after Tormund the Cold on my main account here, and then we'll just get down to a good old shard pulling video. So if either of those things sound interesting to you, stick around. Just some quick channel business. I am still in the midst of my subscriber push. I was hoping to get 5,000 subs by the end of 2023. We're gonna fall short of that goal, but I'm still hopeful that we might get a chance at 4,000. So if you feel like helping me out, please hit the like button for this video. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and consider joining our Discord community. Also, don't forget I live stream three days a week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and you can find that schedule on my YouTube channel. Okay, so there he is, Tormund the Cold. He's sitting at 2,000 Yuletide points, and I am already on my way. As you can see here, I have, what is it? I have about 110 points. So I, it's just started, the event has just started and I'm doing fine. But I have decided to go after Tormund the Cold. Again, this is my main account. And there are a few reasons why I've decided to pursue this. And I'm gonna go over them right now. Okay, so one of the reasons I have decided to pursue Tormund is the champion himself. Now, I am level 100 on this account. I just hit level 100 last week. So I am at end game and this is a free to play account. So I can't really, give up on free champions if I have a chance of getting them and if they are of any value at all. And I do think that Tormund the Cold is a very good arena champion that could definitely add value to my account. And primarily it's because he's a counter for specific kinds of teams that you'll see in arena based on his passive. Now this passive books to a 30% chance of placing a freeze debuff on the enemy each time they receive a buff or have their turn meters filled. So basically what happens is whether the enemy team comes in with buffs passively because they have, I don't know, uh, artifact sets like shield sets that give them a buff, or if it's a go first team like an Arbiter team that's going first and filling turn meters and giving buffs. In either case, Torment has a 30% chance when booked of just placing a freeze on every single enemy that gets that buff or turn meter fill. So he's a great counter to go first teams. He's a great counter to certain teams that spawn in with passive buffs. He's a great counter to any team that's built around applying a lot of buffs that might not have, say, a block debuffs buff. So as a spot champion in live arena, especially, or in 3v3 arena, or even in arena offense or defense, he can be very valuable. And so the champion is worthwhile to my account. There aren't that many champions out there that are potentially going to provide this much value. And because he is potentially free, I mean, we can get him for free. Um, it's definitely something that I had to consider. Now, one of my concerns was this summon rush down here. Sorry, the sign is behind me, but this is a summon rush. And summon rushes are always potentially problematic if you're a free to play player because they're going to take up a lot of shards. But there are a couple of things that made me decide that this summon rush wasn't so bad for me personally. The first thing is I did not pull ancient or sacred shards during the last two times shard weekend. So all four shard types were actually available last weekend and I did pull my voids and my primals, but I'm still sitting on a healthy stack of ancients and some sacreds as well. So I was hoping to save up for the Christmas fusion, but it's, it feels like I actually now that I've looked at this summon rush, I now do have enough shards for potentially this event and the fusion event. And one of the reasons is because they have increased the ancient shard points here. They are typically 20 points, I believe, and they have been increased to 50 points. That's a significant increase. And so what this means is in order to get the 4,100 points that I would need here to get all of the snow points, there'd be 300 snow points here. I only have to pull 82 shards. So I actually have 100 shards. I have a nice round number of 100 ancient shards here. Now you could also pull sacred shards if you wanted to continue or if you have sacred shards because those are still 500 points per shard. But I think this ancient shard point total is actually very friendly. 
It's much better than it typically is. And for me on this particular account, there's not a lot of value to ancient shards. I basically save them for fusions and for guaranteed champion events. So this is a guaranteed champion event. I'm thinking of it like a fusion. And so I'm actually going to pull. And I think it's a little bit of a higher point total than you might get for like a champion chase for a regular fusion event. But it's not that far off. 82 shards. Typically, I pull between 60 and 80 shards during a champion chase for a fusion. So this feels OK to me. Now, the Titan event is bigger than a fusion and will probably suck up more resources in the long run. But with Torment out there, I think it's worth the gamble. It is a little bit of a gamble, but I'm not going to be using any sacred shards because I still want a chance at that Christmas fusion. And also, if you don't know, I am a hoarder of gems here. I've got almost 10,000 gems, so I can always buy shard packs, ancient shard packs, if I need to out of the gem shop. So that's my consideration. Obviously, if you pulled your ancients or your ancients and your sacreds during the last two times shard event weekend, you may not have the resources to go for Torment and to go for the fusion. If I had to decide between the two, I might hold out for the fusion. I've talked to other people who said, no, I'm definitely going to go for Torment instead because I know who this champion is and I know how good he is and where I can use him. So I think either choice is viable depending on what your account looks like and how you like to play. But I'm hopeful, potentially, that I can get Tormund and I can also get the fusion just based on the way I've set up my account. So that's it. There we go. So now let's jump into some actual shard pulls. You can see I've got 100 ancient shards here. I'm not going to be pulling all 100. I am going to just probably pull my 82. I might even just pull 80 and use the rest uh, or get the rest from mystery shards. We'll have to see. Um, I don't think I'm anywhere close to Mercy. I think I hit on a legendary probably about 50 shards ago, so I don't expect to get into the Mercy. Now, there is a progressive chance event going on, so I'm going to utilize that. Now, out of the legendaries that are here, there are a bunch of great legendaries here. Helicath is probably my favorite, but both UDK and Valkyrie are fantastic champions. All three are very tanky, good defensive champions that provide a lot of survivability for your team. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on the way you're looking at it, I own all three of those champions. And although I would love to have a duplicate of Ultimate Death Knight or Helicath, there's actually a really good champion up here that I don't own yet, and that is Archbishop Pinthroy. So I'm going to be putting him in as my 15 times chance. I don't expect to hit a legendary, but if I do hit a legendary and I get Archbishop Pinthroy, that would be a nice little boon to my account. He's pretty good in Hydra. I don't know that I have a huge need for him, but it, he is at least a champion I don't own. The only other champion I don't own up here is King uh, Gal Galkabar, I think his name is. So I don't have him, but I'm all set in his faction, and I don't think his kit is... His kit is fine, but I don't think it's a kit that I particularly need, so I'm going to go for the Archbishop instead. Now, out of the two epics, I own them both. Uh, I have built Miscreated Monster. I have not built Duodan, so I don't know exactly which one I would prefer, but I guess I'll just go for Duodan because I haven't built him out before, and an extra copy could mean an extra book for him. Let's go ahead and confirm that. All right, and now I'm just going to be doing 10 pulls, I think, and then maybe I'll do two at the end, I guess. So let's go ahead and get started. Just so you know, on this account, the only. There's I don't need a ton of things. I, I definitely have some legendaries I could still use on this account that are not void. So there are a few that I can think of. One would be Duchess. I absolutely need a Duchess. I need a Kaimar. Those two are really close to the top of my list. The third one would be Corvus the Corruptor. I love that champion and I would love to have him on this account. I've had him on other accounts and he's a beast. Uh, the fourth legendary that I'd probably like is Kyoku. So any of those four legendaries would be great. And just to round it out as a five, top five wish list, the fifth one would be Geomancer. I don't have Geomancer on my account, and I would just like to get that guy and check him off the list and start building some fun teams with him. So any of those five champions would be great wins. I don't need any other epics in the game. I don't need any of the rares in the game. So it's legendary, Geo, or bust. All right, here we go. Let's do a 10 pull. I hope we don't start with the blue tax. Let's get something. I sh probably shouldn't have mentioned it, right? No, there we go. Woad painted, which is funny because my very first Woad painted, I just pulled uh, not too long ago, maybe like three weeks ago. Uh, I don't remember why I was pulling the shard, but maybe I got her out of a sacred. 
Got another epic. Brush the Mangler. Good epic. I actually have a five-star Grush in my faction crypt team, and he does a really good job at five stars. You don't necessarily need to build this guy to six stars to get him to do some work for you. All right. Third ten pull. We're doing okay on epics. Duke the Pierced, one of my favorite all-time epics. I was just on MTG Jedi's channel for my very first collab, and we were doing the Orcs faction, and I mentioned him as uh, my previous favorite Orc. I think my current favorite is uh, Old Hermit Jork, but those two are very near and dear to my heart. All right, fourth temple. Let's see if we could hit gold. A surprise gold would be nice. Maybe a champion I don't own. Cryodan the Blue. I have actually pulled him, um, so he's not new to the account either, I don't think. Sometimes I forget which champions I have on which accounts because I have run several accounts, but I'm pretty sure that I still have Crydan the Blue on this account. That's looking like a blue tax. There it is. I will say Master Butcher right here is a very good early game Bommel solution. If you can bring him up to 40 or 50, he might help you get past the first Bommel or two. And then you can just relegate him to the Faction Wars team because he's not really going to help you get too high up into Doom Tower. All right, another 10 pull. Let's see. Come on. Let's get something. I always feel the tension's building here. Ah, oh, another blue, blue tax is no good. The tension is building because I keep expecting, like, the more times you do a 10 pull, the more times you think, we got to hit, we got to hit. But of course, you don't. That is that gambler's fallacy, right? Like, that you're due. Still the same old chance. There's the do it in. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. So now I, I just want to own another Master Butcher. I want to step out and I want to take a look. So we did, in fact, hit the do it in. So I suppose I could just keep pulling Duodans and potentially get more books. So I don't have to swap him out for Miscreated Monster. That doesn't make any sense. And I'm actually only going to pull 10 more anyway. So let's just go ahead and do that. Come on, let's get a, let's get a surprise gold here. Or Geomancer. Geomancer would be fantastic. Come on, you can do it. Not another blue tax. Don't end on a blue tax. That's just awful. Wow. All right. Well, let's do two more pulls. Going to do two single pulls here. And are we going to get two more rares? Just to be disappointing? Yes, we are. <laughs> and in fact, we're going to get two more Ogrins, I think. I didn't, I didn't even see the, the previous one. All right. So if we go over here to the event. And we can go down to the Summon Rush. We've got all the way to our snow points down here. Now, I thought about going further to go ahead and pick up some five star chickens. Um, I really am in the need of legendary tomes. I would love to go for the legendary tomes, but I just think that that would drain my resources a little bit too far. Now, I could do it with ancient shards. I could do it with ancient shards. Let's see. Ten ancient shards would be 500. So to get these two books, I would need, it looks like, another 2750. So that would be another, what, 50 shards? Maybe I should do it. I didn't hit on anything. It's only 50 shards. The problem with 50 shards is that would be, let's see, 4,500 gems. That would be 4,500 gems, and that would take me down to... 4,500 gems, right? No, 5,500 gems. So, yeah, I'm going to hold out. I still want to get that Christmas fusion, and I don't want to mess with this. So this is these are enough points. These are enough points for me to get Torm in the Cold. That was my goal. Keep the eye on the prize. I want the free champion. All the other stuff, that would be great, but really, I don't need to drain my resources. So I'm going to hold up here, just exercise some discipline, and hold on to my shards. I'm sorry because I do feel the motivation to always keep pulling when I don't hit on something for a shard pull video, but perhaps this, you know, example of me withholding and, and saving my shards is a good one for free to play players and low spenders out there that, you know, if you have the resources and you can make sure that you're always utilizing them in the best manner possible, exercise some restraint when you need to go all in, when you get good value, 
that's the way to build a really nice free-to-play account. So it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's exciting, but it's it's a good decision. So, all right, thanks for that. Thanks for hanging around. Let me know in the comments below if you have pulled four Tormund. Uh, did you hit anything? Did you get any extra lucky pulls along the way? I'm just looking at these champions basically as chickens, which is going to be fine because there's a champion training event going on right now. So, but yeah, did you hit and or did you decide to hold on to your shards and you're going to go for the Christmas fusion instead? Let me know that as well. All right, that is it for me. Thanks so much for hanging out. I've been Colred, and I will see you in another video soon.